Hello, hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today we're working on the butterfly journal and several of you wanted to see me sew in the signature and how I was going to do it with those five signatures that I had. So we're going to look at that and do that today. And here is the sneaky peek. Here's a very pretty little page, a little dotted page. I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to try to show you how to do this. So I'm going to make me a little little mark here and I'm going to kind of show you how to do this little file folder flip because I need to make one for my ideas journal and you know just to have on hand and maybe for a journal or two who knows okay so this is the image that is on the front and this came from um, uh, spring fling and it's one of the the uh, digitals that's in Mrs. E scrapbooking with me in her um, video files and uh, you can pay for it it's got all kinds of stuff in there it's it's got some gorgeous you know Victorian or kind of 20s uh, looking ladies and all kinds of things but it, it's worth the money I think her granddaughter Bethany did it and then I sewed around the outside of this page because I sewed to uh, pages together because they had white backs and then I just inked it and then I created the pocket just with some scrap and framed it you know and then this is from um, an envelope so I took a big huge window of an envelope and I created this uh, photo behind this butterfly is on the top because you can see he's over here on the edge and I put a little bit of an alphabet there just for interest and then I inked it and I had stamped this before I put it together um <laughs> see this was the back of or the part of a book as you can see and then I just made an eyelet and uh some dangles and they stick out the top so they don't add bulk to the the journal itself that's the way I made it and since that wasn't exciting enough, okay, <laughs> we're going to continue over to here to the middle. Um, now you can see I've got memories on this side, and I probably have a word on that side. This is my tag, double tag belly band. And the thing is that I wanted them to stay together <clears throat> when they went into a journal, but they add too much resistance for the page to go shut. As you can see so I don't know <clears throat> I think I got in here and cut that or that's hiding the tie that's it where I tied the journal together um, but yeah this is actually some of my wedding stationery I had sent out my own <laughs> you know invitations to my wedding and I had these very pretty little uh, envelopes with roses and lace is on there and then I did a little collage and yeah and then I just have these two big large pieces from a Stamperia pad for somebody to journal on not that mom is going to journal but <laughs> it's there okay so there's the last of that and let me set this to the side okay I was going to show you this I glued this together earlier because it's not something you need to see but I took this Neapolitan ice cream sandwiches and I had measured the back of my let me get this out of the way the back of my spine and you definitely want to lift it up when you're measuring <clears throat> because you want it to have the room to fold up now I could have gotten a, a little bigger like maybe out to there but you know it doesn't matter if you didn't because I'm going to show you a way of covering the edges here that's really cute and this is some old old paper don't even ask me where i got it <laughs> um it's by provo craft whoever they are and it's a paper passport and this was greens and i think i had a couple other colors as well uh handcrafted by paper artisans but yeah it's um <clears throat> i don't even know it just says made in india 100% recycled paper um, so I'm going to use this one right here I believe to go in this area here 
underneath and it's going to be really similar to this one now i got this one put together the other day but i used tea bags on here and um i just want i had a little bit of room under there that you could actually see if it's folded up so i added like three layers of tea bags and just glue them down first and then i um i kind of glued up underneath of here just so that hid any kind of gap that used to be there but this is so easily bendable that tea bag is a great choice it's vintagey looking um you can see how this is a hidden signature as well so you can kind of see how i got it together i take my fabric tack and i after i've sewn all of my layers uh signatures onto the the uh, little insert here then it just gets uh, glued in. But I didn't go all the way in. I just went in a little bit with that uh, tea bag, as you can see. You can go all the way, but I didn't want to hinder the good stick, you know, to the back of the piece. So what we're going to do here is get this out of the way. And I had these two pieces left over from when I had cut the background out. It was probably like that just like that and uh, I always do usually a six by nine so what we want to do here is get our fabric tack back out it can be fabric tack or it can be like regular wet glue uh, I'm just using this because it's a, a quicker stick and it's shining as you can see I don't guess it really matters because you're going to cover this all around with this okay so let me kind of put it right there and then i've got my little burnisher now i had three layers like i said of this and i burnished i used the fabric tack and then i burnished each time and got that together now i did cut these all to be the similar size to each other but you know you don't always get that so I had to get in there and trim just a little bit. But other than that, they went together well. All right. I want to really show my appreciation and thank you, thank you for coming and spending a little time with me. I hope you uh, enjoy this. Uh, it's called a hidden spine. There's so many different spines, but this is my favorite. It has been my favorite ever since i discovered it i don't know who i saw doing it that first time Oop, you can see where i got some <laughs> got some uh, glue coming out there most of this is going to be hidden by your signature so if you get a little messy on the glue don't worry about it and i've got this paper back here because sometimes fabric tack likes to take a walk and as you can see i got that at hobby lobby i think for 69 cents and I'm just going to trim this down real quick. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll keep that little piece. Who knows what I can do with it? You just never know. Now, I didn't quite give myself enough room up here. But what you want to do is you want to cut at an angle. And you cut in like that on each one of your corners. And this is where we're just going to cover this all the way. So you can't see any of the goo gosh, you know <laughs> the workings <laughs> so there we go and I'm listening for Graylin he had to take a little trip outside so he may be knocking on the door I've been watching these if, I guess they're videos on my feed and uh, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and fold this up just to train it on all sides but they there's these cats and this one's name is Todd you know what a name for a cat but <laughs> but he uh he knows how to use one of those uh word boards they have all these buttons down and it's usually like a hexagon or a an a octagon shape kind of a situation and it looks like over time they've added words or to the 
the actual system so it's kind of like all over the place kind of squiggling all over the floor anyhow these cats are talking <laughs> i mean they're not using full sentences but almost uh, it's amazing i can't believe how I'm, i was wondering about if i should try to train Graylin, but i doubt if he would do it <laughs> he's too he's too ornery he probably won't do it now since this is two pieces of paper you know I've, I've got a harder job here but usually you would have one um but yeah you just kind of pull it up like that and pull it over and get your sides to go down yeah I used a little bit too much glue it looks like <laughs> but then you know you want it to stick but yeah um one of the cats name is glamour now i've never heard of a cat named glamour either <laughs> but but they're so cute uh, i think todd was telling his uh his master or whatever you want to call him um his human there we go his, his human you're never a master over a cat i can tell you that from having them since four years old i have had cats they're I don't know if you'd call it my spirit animal or I'm just so attuned to cats. Now, they say cats have ESP and all that kind of stuff. I don't have that. So, maybe my cat has it. But, but little Todd, he was telling his human about Glamour, who is an older cat, like 15 or something. And he, he pushed, and it's like... I don't know how many minutes in between each each button he pushes, but it, it is not instant. It's like the cat's sitting there, and he tells us that uh, the cat, when he's thinking about the next word to use, or he's thinking about what he wants to answer, <laughs> he'll groom himself or something like that. But he said glamour, and that was it. And then the guy is saying, well, what about glamour? What about her? As he sits there and grooms and does this and that. And then all of a sudden, he says, ouch. I think it's ouch. Um, I can't remember if he, had, he put back on there or not. I think he did, though. So that was all the guy got. So he said, well, we'll, we'll go and get Glamour um, taken to the vet and check on her because... He says maybe it was arthritis or something at her age. And the cat, Glamour must have told Todd, or, you know, I don't know how cats communicate, you know. They have certain things that they do. <laughs> um, but anyhow, all right, we're done with that. Somehow, Todd knew about Glamour. And then the next one I saw... They had figured out that Glamour did have issues. She she got some pills or something to take. And uh, she was going to... And she was much better. That was the thing. She was much, much better. All right. Now, these babies... I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get in here decoration-wise. Because look at this thing. It's, <laughs> it's back. I'm going to have to really concentrate and go for thinner much thinner uh decorations or something but yeah you want to make sure your little edges are pretty straight they look good all right yeah usually you pull your uh bone folder or, or something against it you can get that nice crease to come out i like that i've got a little decoration back there all right so what i'm going to do next is ugh, i don't looking at that i ain't got much to work with so we're just going to get on here I'm always a person. Now, this is a Tim Holtz ruler that has one side is regular 1 to 12. Um, but on this side, you have a 0. And then you have like a 1 inch and 2 inch and 3 inch. And this is the side I'm always using. It is also the tapered side. If you don't have one of these... I would suggest getting one if you're one a person that does a lot of journals or measuring and trying to find the center of things or make up your own just make up your own with a piece of cardboard or something and go along this concept because it is great but you also have the tapered end which is the one you would do the tracing or whatever and then you have this metal end 
and that's the one where you use your exacto knife or something to cut a straight line on especially when i'm doing a background and i've learned to do it all in one big piece and then i want to cut it apart in these three pieces that i've got over here that's when i'll use this piece especially with my exacto knife all right enough of that <laughs> so we have to find the middle and I messed up up here at one time and tried to clean it, clean the goo off of it with fingernail polish remover. So I screwed it up. But I did put the four back in here so I can see where it's at. Um, but it's usually four and a half on each end. I'm just a little off. But here is the center. And then I'm going to go over here just to give me a, a pretty good bead on the center. Yeah, I think I must have glue there. It's not one to go down. And then I'm always a three person. I like to do the three. I mean, you could do the four, but sometimes I'll put littler pieces inside, you know. And what happens then is you don't catch them. And what I'm going to do here is do a, a light tracing. Some people will take a piece of paper and they'll make a template. Now, I don't, I don't guess I'm going to make this size of a, a back again. You know, all of my backs are usually different sizes. So I don't do that, but I'll write on here and then erase it later. Now we have five. This is where you'll take this again and you're going to go, hmm, that's two inches wide. So I know I've got five. So the center is definitely one. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a, little pin over here because I can't see what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> so this is definitely the center. That's one hole. Um, and then we can divide it up. I'm going to say I'm going to put that as the outside hole right there. And then you're going to go to the center of those two points, which is this. And that's how I'm doing it. It's this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> So that's my division on all of my pieces. I guess you could see that. Let me zoom down. And we're going to look at it close up here. Okay. So I have the two inches. I know the center is this right here, which is one of them. I figured I would go out here to that point. Because you need a little bit of room there on the, the outside. That is pretty tight, but... You know, I, I got a lot of paper. <laughs> okay, so that's how we're going to do that one. We're going to flip this one around. And we're going to do the same thing. Yeah, once you get that first one figured out, you kind of know where the rest of them need to go. So there's no problem there. So those are the, the three points. And then this is the center point, And that is the center point. Okay, so now the next step is to poke the holes. All right, I forgot to tell you to do the racing. So now that we've got our, our dots on there and they're in there good, I'm going to be able to erase that. Though that's so light, you know. Oh, did I erase my dots? What did I do there? <laughs> what in the world did I just do? Oh. All right, I got to get back in there again. What happened? Did I not hit it? Maybe I was on top of the glue. Oh, I, I bet there's glue right there. Well, I've erased it, so... Okay, I'm not going to erase it again. I think that's what happened. I got a bit of glue there because that's where I had to put those two pieces together and I rubbed it down. Yeah, so... <laughs> my bad, my bad. All right, yeah, see. Over here, there's no issue. So we got that done. Now we're going to get to the poking part. I'm going to give you like, if you're wanting to do your own books, I'm going to give you the things that you're going to need. So the first was some kind of a ruler with a center measuring system. You can make it yourself. It, you know, it doesn't matter. You can take an old ruler that you already got and revamp the, the number system, just like the Tim Holtz one here. Where you've got um, where the six is is where the zero is, 
where the 5 is and the 7 will be the 1 and then 2 at 4 and 8 and etc. You can make your own. You don't have to buy one. You could even put like a piece of washi or something on there and do your numbers with it. Um, now, the other thing is a pokey tool is very needed. I mean, you can get, you can, what is it? I've seen some bead reamers. Um, sometimes you have a bead that, that has like the hole is not well made, but it's not exactly a point, but you could use that if you've got one of these. If you have um, like a needle and I, when I sew stuff together, I'm using, what do you call that? A cross stitch needle? It's blunt. It doesn't have a point, but you could use it. You might have to put some oomph behind it. Now, my item of interest to do all my books is these two pieces of foam. I think they came out of a computer uh, case um, when I got a new computer. You can use a book. I've seen people use like a thick book. I think Gail Agust Gustinelli does that. But you're going to want to poke in, and I always twirl. Now, I don't know where I got this, but I had this myself. But you can actually buy these pokey tools. If you have an ice pick, <laughs> good grief. I don't know how thick a, an ice pick is, though. You don't want it to be so thick that it's going to uh, make a tremendously large hole. Now, this one makes one just about right with that thickness there. Um, but you want it to be big enough for your needle to go in. I probably need to find me some more needles because I think I broke one of them because it wouldn't go all the way through one of my books. <laughs> whoopsie and so I, I tugged and tugged and snap <laughs> and the part that snapped was where the thread went through okay so those two sets are done and now this one and this is all I do stick it in there and I'm on one of these mats that's like for cutting your fabric and things like that uh, it's not a very good one my green one was in better shape I might have to pull that out Again, this one, I've cut it, and it didn't self-heal. Like, right down through that gray area, it didn't self-heal at all. Okay. And then I use this for so many other things as well. I mean, when you do die cuts, you need to poke all those little extras out that won't come out. That comes in handy then, too. And I think, what did I just order? What did I just order, and I got this? So I got a pokey tool here, and then I forget what this other side is. Oh, it's like a blady kind of a thing. What was that for? I, it was something I just got a piece of equipment. Oh, I might, I might remember one day. <laughs> one day I might remember. I'm looking around to see if I see it. <laughs> I, I don't know. Crap. All right. Enough of that. Okay. Now. We're still going to need this. We're still going to need to measure, and we're still going to need the pokey tool. I should put. <laughs> but what we want to do, and I've got these in the order of arrangement. Let me get this out of the way. Um, but I want to. Ooh, okay, got that out of the way. I want to go ahead and put these together. Now they're all about the same size, so I don't think there's that much arranging that I need to do. But what you want to do is you want to go through and make sure you are the same, top and bottom, about all the way through. Especially if, you're, um, if your piece here is almost uh, the height of your book. So everything there looks good. Now this is not quite in the center, so I might move that up just a tad, and then... I gotta move that back down but yeah this is what you want to do for each of your signatures you want to get in there and fluff it you know I kind of almost feel like I want to let it just wing it <laughs> just wing it all right that one's gonna go up okay 
There, and that was the center. Now, when you get to the center, and I'm going to scoot that up just a little bit more, I got to get in here with my big paper clips. And these are also from, I think I got them at Hobby Lobby at one point. I've, I've seen that people have gotten them, oops, from Amazon or somewhere else like that. I know they're orderable. And there's this called a jumbo paper clip, I think. I'm trying to think where else I've seen them. They seem to be out there now since, you know. And then you don't have to use these big paper clips if you have just kind of a clampy kind of a thing. You're just wanting to hold all these layers together. And then once you get that done, you get back in here with this and... I'm trying to, and you want to get right in the dead center because you're wanting all these signatures to be just right. And it looks like it's four and a quarter on all sides. And I don't know, I've got that washi in here. I don't know if this will stay on there. Oh, I think it'll stay on there long enough for me to poke it. Okay. And then one right there. All right. Get that out of the way, and then we're going to put it on here and get that pokey tool back out and give it a poke. And what you want to do is I try to kind of hold it against me, and then you want it to be sort of a 90 degree angle, and then you're going to go all the way through. Ooh, oh, <laughs> bent that back up, and here's my middle. Bring it out, and then here's that, and bring it out. All right, now, if you're not quite in your groove back here, that is okay. Sometimes you can re-poke it, sometimes not. <laughs> but I'm going to do, what have I got? I think I've got enough to do two more. Yeah, and then I'll be back, and we'll start sewing it in. All right, so we got three of them done, and they look pretty much right on the money on the, the points of my pages. That's a little one off to the side, but not much. And then I always tie my needle onto a string with like a little, a little tag on it so I can find it. I have it usually up here on the top of my desk area uh, in a little bottle little jar like a canning jar a little tiny one so this is hemp that I got on sale down at Hobby Lobby had all kinds of different colors so I picked this really pretty light pink color well we're gonna have to hmm. that's right before we sew this in we got to put this on here so hold it for the hemp <laughs> hold it on the hemp um, yeah, so this has got like greens in it. So that's why I thought that would go there. Well, where is the there it is I've used a little of this before but you know now and then Oop. Let's see I've got a bigger piece back there Let's let's see what I can do with this piece first so I want to have a ripped area. Look, you can see where rusty paper clip was on there. Uh, it's not on this side. Uh, so I'm going to rip it. Oh, and it's got like a white core. Rats. Uh, it might not hurt nothing. But I'm just going to do like this. I, I wonder if I could use cheesecloth or something. I wondered about that too. That is kind of bright. It's sort of a garden book, though. So let me see if I got cheesecloth. All right, change of decision. <laughs> I have this gray cheesecloth, and I think it'll it'll do wonderful. Um, I just want to be able to cover up that or dull it down that uh, piece that's back there. <sighs> and I'm wondering how to do this. If I can just do it all in one fell swoop, or if I need to actually cut it and just do it along the edge like I did the other one. 
Hmm. Well, let me get me some rough edges and I'll start trimming here. I think I think I can come along right here. I'm off the <laughs> I'm off the uh, the video there, but I'm coming in. <laughs> Coming in for a landing. Oh, I was watching World War Z yesterday. Has anybody seen that movie? Brad Pitt. Oh, it's a good movie. <laughs> good movie. Oh, goodness. It, it, it's, a, it's kind of a neat concept. Now, I love movies where they have this concept. And I don't even know what the... Um, what ground zero was or whatever caused the zombieism in everybody but I, I love the idea at the end where he figured out what the weakness of, of the virus was I mean it made you want to find a healthy host and bite them <laughs> so so what happened was he had seen where it went around and they had built a wall over in Jerusalem to keep these creatures out but they got in I mean they just kept piling and piling and piling on top of each other and was able to get inside of the wall and once one gets in boom you're, it's over it was over because one it only took like um 11 seconds or something to become a zombie <laughs> all right so i'm going to do this like i did the other one we're going to go ahead and put us a little oh, oh, oh smear of glue right down through here and i need my silicone spatula now when you use fabric tack you know you might want to try to find you one of these little spatulas you can sometimes find them at that Sally uh, Beauty, the places where you can get nail stuff and all that kind of good thing. Um, but, and, and at Dollar Tree, they have these little finger cots, they call them. I think that's what you call them. That uh, you can actually put on your finger and dibby dab down through there. So... That's also something that can be used. Because you'll be peeling that stuff off until doomsday. And Now you can get hand sanitizer. Which is pretty good about pulling that off. Or helping it come off. So. I'm wanting a random look here. I'm going to trim some of this back. So it's not going to be all the way up in here. Um, and then we have this side. This gives, it's, you know, sort of a little rustic look. So, I'm going to go ahead and put it on an edge at a time. So, yeah, the, in World War Z, he, um, he had saw where, when, once these creatures uh, breached the wall and everything or into uh, somewhere they took off after healthy humans but there was an old man one time and it, they just kind of flew around and they didn't understand or nobody was really paying attention because of all the craziness going on but he had seen it uh, Brad Pitt so it made him start to wonder what was going on. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to get in here and trim this up just a tad, and then I'll be back. All right, got that done. So I'll be trimming and pulling at that and stuff later after I get it all together. But for now, that, that'll that be fine. So what you want to do now is to be sewing your signatures into your hidden spine there now the reason it's called a hidden spine is because we're not going totally through the book cover to the back because I, I really like that little butterfly and I didn't want to mar the outside uh, so that's why this is called a hidden spine 
because you had all of the workings. <laughs> and the rule of thumb is three. So you take your hemp and you go one, two, trying to roll off, three. Three dimensions or three lengths of your signature. And that's all you need. So we need three of those. One, two, three. Now, if I know I'm not going to do dangles or anything like that, I will usually just go two and a half, to tell you the truth. And then I just tie a knot and cut that down. Um, there's another way you could do this. I'm going to do it where the knot's going to be inside. But, you know, tell you the truth, we could do it to where it's going to be a totally, totally hidden spine. But the only thing is, when you put your knot on this end of it, you're going to have that extra bulk sticking up. So maybe we won't do it that way. But there's two ways to go in. Let me thread my needle. And then we're going to take our front and figure out which way is up. I don't, it doesn't matter with this because it's sideways. <laughs> so we're going to go in first this way. And then I'm going to go through the very first hole here in the middle. And um, if you wanted to put the knot on the inside where nothing's visible, then you would come in this way. But this is called a three hole pamphlet stitch. And. <laughs> I usually will take and tuck this one little uh, guy under here. Now, I was going to tell you also, if you can't find these paper clips or anything, use clothespins. I was I thought about that afterward, and I thought, mm, yep, clothespin would work. It'll just hold your three layers together. And then what we want to do, I'm, I'm all over the place. Okay, I just came through the middle into the back. We're going into either the top or the bottom hole, either one, doesn't matter which direction you go in. And then we're going to go, well, I just pulled it out of my needle. And then we're going into the top. Go that way. Then, <laughs> then you're going to go all the way down to the bottom or the other end, whichever, and go in. And then go through here. I'm trying to remember. I think I, th I'm forg I think this is how Mrs. E at Scrapbooking with Me does hers. Because I think Gail uh, has this other kind of weird way she does hers. But I like this way. This is plain and simple. You don't get confused. Now when you go in through here. And we're going back into the middle hole again to finish off. Make sure you don't cut your thread. I mean, don't go into the thread that's already there. And then you want one string on one side and one string on the other. Now you can do that after you get it in here. It doesn't matter. But we're, we're all the way in, all of our holes. Now you can just kind of pull it and get it taut. But before you tie hold it together and go back here and make sure everybody is in there right no loops are sticking out anywhere that kind of thing all right then I'm just going to go in here and tie knots I'm not having no dangles in this or anything it is what it is and I do three knots if you want to be fancy you can tie a bow uh let's just tie a bow <laughs> Let's just tie a bow and have it complete. All right. There we go. It's not, it's not wonderful, but it's all right. It'll do the job. And then you cut it. And then you're done with your clips. And you're ready for your next one. And that's all there is to it. Now we're going to do another one. Got to get the, the thread... In our needle. I'm gonna make sure I'm in screen. <laughs> but you gotta go in here. Make sure you're right side up as well. At all times, make sure everybody is facing up. Like whatever's inside here. Make sure all your pages are right. 
uh, that is the one thing that will just blow you out of the water and make you just want to give it up. <laughs> it's when you sew something in upside down. All right. I tuck that in. So we're going to go into our middle right next to this one because this is our second signature. Now, if you need help pushing the needle through, I have usually uh, used my pliers that I do beadwork with. Um, I think I have another kind of a, um, a plier over there. It's got like a flat edge. A lot of times I'll sometimes use the base of this and help push the needle through if it's really, really tight. Okay, there's my top one. Oops. <laughs> okay. I got a lot of thread still there. There we go. Now, going into our bottom. And I'm doing these separate, but if you're gung-ho about it, you can put them all together and push the needle through at one time. I'm just wanting to make sure I get in the right spot. <laughs> it's always hard, this last one, to go through because you tr you're trying to get it on the other side. You're trying not to thread, and I think I just threaded some of that, I think. And then you got to wiggle it just right to get it, yeah, there we go, to get it to come straight up. There. All right. Now we're going to give it a tug. Either way, get in here and make sure everybody's flat and flush. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's not any different. Than doing a single signature or a double signature uh, journal. You just have to make sure everybody's in the right position facing up. And it just gets harder when you have more. <laughs> that's that's it. I, you know, I'm not going to do this bow thing. Okay. <laughs> and I sometimes will keep these extra little long pieces. Because you never know. You can always use them on something. And I got one little drawer here that I stick all those little extra pieces in like a button like you wanted to use a button on something to decorate and you wanted a tie in the middle of a button that's perfect for that I mean you didn't need much it gets it's just enough all right put this one in now I'm not going to show you the the two last ones I'm going to sew this one in did I get underneath of something. No. I'm going to sew this one in because you got the gist and then we're going to glue it. <laughs> glue them together. Glue it into the journal. Okay. So there I'm going to the top and then into the top hole there. Yeah, but back to Todd. I'm just fascinated with Todd. And then he had a... And then the guy went away or something on vacation. And he... Uh, Todd gave him seven words, I think it was. He, <laughs> he put seven words out there. And it was like a summary of what the guy missed while he was gone. And it was so cute. He was telling him that Glamour's back was better... And see, I'm on the wrong side there. Let me, you know, there we go. And, um, yeah, and see, this is where I'm pushing. There, it helped me go all the way through. But, yeah, he's telling him about Glamour's back and, uh, oh, the fireworks. Yeah, there was fireworks. So he kept hitting noise. He hit noise three times at the very beginning. And he was telling him that there was noise. And um, I forget there was another word he used with that. But uh, it was an odd word. But, you know, you had to, like, think how this cat would tell you something with just the few words that he's got in his vocabulary. And it, it was right on the money, whatever that word was. I can't remember. Uh, okay. So I'm getting off of here. I'm going to... Sew the last two signatures in. I didn't take the goodies out of this one. So, 
so far this is what we have and I got just I got something I'm going to show you at the very end that's beyond this you know uh, but yeah yeah look Ooh, goodness what a book what a book so far okay let me get, let me get these last two in and then I'll show you how it gets glued in okay so they are all sewn in and as you can see all my strings are pretty straight I don't see any loopies that have came through and didn't get uh, pulled taut um, I was going to mention uh, da, 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 da. if you don't have hemp you can use embroidery floss I can't remember if I said that or not and you did hear me tell you about the if you don't have the paper clips use clothes pins <laughs> we all have those so yeah it looks like everybody's in here all right side up <laughs> which is a plus yep so our next part now is to glue it in and that's why you had to have this step in first however you wanted to do it uh, I didn't want that that was the color of the uh, cotton material that I used, but I didn't want that to show through as strongly as it it would have if I didn't cover that now fabric tack is my glue of choice I like it because it's fast it, it's also going over fabric which is the strings um, I go along all the edges and I, I try not to get too close to the edge because it's going to seep just a little bit I'm probably off the screen there um, but yeah you try to get like an eighth of an inch away is what I do and then I kind of go down each one of the strings with the glue on top of it and then in between and this will glue in those strings so they're secure um, heaven forbid that one of them breaks <laughs> a lot of people will use wax thread and I've never used that. I mean, I'm sure that may be the better choice. I just got this thread on a deal at a Hobby Lobby. And I went with it. Alright, I think that might be enough. Can you kind of see how much I used? You don't want to overdo it because you're going to be pushing this down. Let me get that glue off my finger. Um, so this is right side up. We're going to be lining it up with the top and I think the way I made this is top to bottom oh no it's not not all the way but then before everything gets cemented in make sure you go ahead and this makes it uh, centered about to where you want it to be now the way I do it I've seen some people that will just glue their book or hook their book together like this and then let it dry overnight I get in here push it down a little more um, I get in here with this bone folder and I push and that's what I did with that industrial one I just showed you over there I just get in here and I keep pushing and I'll do the bottom I'll do the top um, just to get that in there really good and secure and that's that's like at least for five minutes because that's about the time it takes for your your fabric tack to dry well it may be even longer because you're under a you know you're under an area where it's not going to get any air or anything and then I'll keep pulling these up and making sure I sometimes just get in there with my hands I don't really have that much room in between each one of these signatures but you can get in there like that and do some pushing that will I don't know that's not the proper way to do it because I don't want to make a more maybe like that yeah my finger will fit and I'll just get in there and kind of rub and I just keep doing that that's <laughs> that's what I'll just keep doing and as you can see there is a little bit of room in between each one of the signatures so that's good but yeah like that just keep pushing and working with it and you know you don't have to rush it this is something you're
putting together and you're wanting to stay together nice and secure and um, just keep going back and doing the same old thing. Hmm. I do see that I'm a little off down here at the bottom. So that may be something where I can take uh, some extra cheesecloth. I'm flush at the top. I don't know. I thought I measured it to where it was <laughs> right on the money. But maybe I could take some cheesecloth or a marker or something and just mark that out so you don't see it. Or it might not be that important. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I think it might be all right. And then you just keep rubbing. Now, I probably don't want that much of this cheesecloth here, so I'll probably go back in here and, and trim that off a little bit. And then pull me some hairs out. Or maybe I'll do that first, pull the hairs out, and then I'll trim it. But, you know, whichever way. You can see a little bit of that still in there. So it might be I trim that off and then re-glue it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh I usually do this off camera, so <laughs> you don't see it. Um, but there. There we go. I think it's in there pretty good. You can look at the top and make sure it's really good and secure. Sometimes people will clip these parts on the ends to where it's, it's in there good. So let me do that. All right. I got some bulldog clips, and I'm just going to clip these two ends and then I'm going to fold it shut and hopefully that'll keep that'll keep that secured and until it dries and in here I can see it's pretty it's pretty well down in here so we're just going to kind of leave it shut like that and let it go about drying <laughs> Trying, trying to figure out where to put it. All right. It, it went to bed. I <laughs> put it over in this box. Now, this is one I had the other day. Uh, I didn't, I, well, I didn't show this to you the other day, but it was one that I had completed, and I made it really tall. It is 11 and a half because I wanted this to stay on it. And... It had to be this big, and I didn't want to cut this doily down, but it's going to cover the surface, and I got to thinking, you know, it actually looks like a butterfly net in a way, the way it's made. So I think I might use this for my specimen journal, because I have a specimen journal that I'm going to do, and I just have to think about the pages that go in it. It could take a whole 12 by 12 because I think the surface or the, the front is 6. So it might be able to take a 12 by 12 and I just kind of rip the edge on it and just cut it down a little bit. So that was one I forgot to show you. You know, I'm forgetting to show you a lot of things. All right. So this one, this came from the shop. It had this cover on it. <laughs> I think it's been there since last March or something, 2023. And I guess nobody liked it. I did like hand, um, hand stitching where I, I sewed in the trim and I sewed that trim on. And then I did a little group of roses. And that's actually a couple buttons that I made right there. <laughs> I might have to make some more buttons. I mean, I got a ton of them anyway. So this, I think, was hindering anybody from wanting to buy it. It was just a piece that I'd made way back with scrap quilting. And um, maybe they didn't like the black. So I took and I used this one. This was a book that Tommy gave me. I think it was called Enchanted Garden. And um, it was sort of like fairies and gnomes and stuff like that. This Pathways, I think it came off of an old, old paper pad that I had. And I liked it, and I had it cut out <laughs> over there. And I thought, hey, I'm going to use that. Because the way I've got this uh, shut, you've got a, um, a, 
aisle it here, you got to aisle it there. And since the purple was here, I, I used the purple flowers. And so you untie it there to open it. And it's got that little loopy thing back here. So um, it had something in here about, I took the path less traveled. And I thought, whoa, maybe I can do pathways. And then it was called Enchanted Garden, and it was on the edge of a lot of the papers. So I just cut that out and put it there. And the way I made this, it has one little area here. It's about a quarter of an inch that came over the spine so I could sew it in. And then I glued this other doorway to it because that was in the... Uh, in one of the paper pad areas it had like three of the same thing so i was able to use two doors i love the mushrooms um and then you open it and i had this on the inside where that little black lace was and it's just like a little little letter or something that you can write on the inside i forget i think somebody gave me that and i cut it out and put it together but it slides right in here where the butterfly is at oops get in there there we go. And then over here, we have a window. And I like the, the rock and then the, the ivy. This has ivy all over it, but some, this one rock page didn't, but then that did. Uh, here's a mushroom with a gnome. And he's up here in the top. And it just slides down in there. Then I have a little tag here. It says, Live Your Own Fairy Tale. And it's got that little girl on that side. It's like a, I guess it's a fairy, a fairy ballerina. <laughs> and then this was part of, all of this is out of that one paper pad. And I was using what I could. This was in there. It was like a little, I made it just like a little booklet. But I think you were supposed to uh, glue those together. And, but it all had things to do with garden. When I made the cover, I cut this part off and made a, um, made a pocket there, and then I used all these little scraps that I had to make like a little doodah. Now, this was uh, a piece from a jewel design, and it was just, I think a lot of this was scrap that I had. Pieces and parts that was left over. Um, I had this from the kit, so I went and glued that to the back, because that's just copy paper, so that strengthened it. And then you had this you could write on. There's a lot of journaling in here, journaling areas, even though it's kind of a small signature. I love that. I mm, love the butterflies. This has cherished, to hold dear, to treasure, adore, value, and love. I think that was a white sheet of paper. <laughs> here was some of my tea dye. Um, and then this, it just had this, it was like washi or something faux washi that we made um i forget who showed us i think it was scrapbooking with me but i put a few extra pieces on here and i thought that that helped it out a lot <laughs> a lot okay this was in here i think maybe kyung sent me that or um maybe uh tommy i can't remember who sent me that and then i have a door which can be written on and this was just like a scrap piece of paper, and I made a pocket. Uh, I had this quote over here by Confucius. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. And I put a few little pieces there. And then I put this little ballerina fairy here. And let's see what else. We just got paper, paper, some uh, vellum, some of my paper. And then I had this piece in the middle, and I dyed it pink. And then I did some rub on and a bunch of washi and just kind of decorated it up. I had this piece on there, and then I added that. That was part of this kit. And then I have Wish. And, yeah, I just kind of put a lot of washi and, and rub ons on it just to decorate it up. There's Great Minds Think Alike, another little fairy girl. And then that's the other side of the book page. I like how that one turned out. And there we go. Another bit of the uh, vellum. And then this has the um, bird bath in it. And then I have a bird bath here. And that was part of that faux washi strip. <laughs> Another quote. 
the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with heart. Helen Keller. That was a, a great lady. That turned out pretty neat. I just threw that on there yesterday. And I got some wrinkles in some of this paper, don't I? And then I added this dragonfly and this little green and purple strip. And it's got believe. To put one's trust in. To accept at, on as fact. To have faith in. <laughs> and then here's a big piece of vellum back here. And another one of those postcard tucky things. This was all there was to this uh, piece of the cardstock. It was like on the edge. So I used it like this and it's perfect. And then I have a little, I guess, a signpost back here. And I put the Enchanted Garden on the top one of those. So you can see that it's one way or the other. And then here was another little piece. And I put it on some um, extra tea bag that I had. And then in here, are po oh, I forgot to show you the pocket. Uh, in the front here is a pocket as well in that same spot. This is how I did... Um, one of my books a while back and I know I showed it to you but I glue this uh, down like this and it's just right underneath of here so I glued it like there there and there cut a thumb punch then I put this pocket over top of it and hide that little bit because this was not a full piece and then you know I got a, a pocket both ways and I kind of have that back here as well I just didn't put anything in that one and this is is the same thing it's got a little fairy girl doing something who knows and then she goes in that pocket and then i have this one with a key since i've got a door here i thought the key was perfect and this was another one of those i guess it was a journal card and here is a tuck i didn't put anything in it and then i got a little bug and a butterfly there and that's all there is but yep I had to revamp it. I think they'll like it much better since it has to do with fairies and it has mushrooms and garden things and stuff like that. So I think that'll go over a whole lot better. Oh, I need to put one of my things inside of it. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, one of my papers. Let me just tuck it right in there and then I can put it in my box that'll go on my next uh, delivery. All right. I want to thank everyone for coming to visit, and I hope you got a little bit of um, of uh, hands-on uh, confidence in putting a book together yourself. I know it, it looks like it's uh, intimidating, but it really isn't. You just do a, a single signature and build up from there, and you will you will slowly get there. It just takes time. It took me two or three years, um, but I really encourage you to try get out there and try <laughs> so all my subscribers and viewers i really appreciate you thank you thank you and everybody come back and visit me again bye bye